So next what I wanted to do was start sorting out the wheels. So I picked these up from the, the same guy that I got the hood off of and that hood still needs to go on the truck. What I'm gonna do, I've actually already sent off four of these wheels uh, to my friends at, at Spectrum and they're gonna sand them all out and polish them up and make them look like new. You won't believe, I mean, how good they're gonna look. It's night and day difference. It's like they're a brand new wheel. They can take something like this and, and just make it shiny again. Cause that's what they did on, uh, on the Blue Pete. So I took four of those over and got them polished. So we'll pick those up probably in another week. But what I was thinking of doing, because I still have these short studs on there, I really don't want to press out all the studs. I'd have to take all the hubs off, press them out, then buy longer studs and put them in. And I was thinking I'll go with steels on the inside because the, the stud is shorter and the thickness of these steel wheels is about three eighths of an inch, whereas the aluminum is about an inch thick. So the studs are about two inches long on the hubs right now. So you can get the, uh, you got enough material there, enough thread for the bud stud, uh, whatever you call it, the, 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 the bud lug, and then you can get longer bud lugs for to accommodate the thicker aluminum wheel. So we'll do steels on the inside and aluminum on the outside, and then we'll just get a, uh, a plastic uh, plate that separates the steel from the aluminum so you don't have the, the welding that you've been seeing in some of these episodes. So that's what we'll do. I was going to try and clean these up. I, I mean, I really wish I would have got them cleaned up when the sandblaster was here. But upon closer inspection, trying to save a few bucks, this isn't gonna be worth it. There is a ridiculous amount of rust in there. And then I remembered that some of the, uh, I think just because they're so worn, some of the some of the holes were worn out as well. And I just, you don't wanna screw around with safety. So I'll get some new steel wheels. They're about 150 a piece. I have ordered eight new tires, so we'll get those. We'll put four on the uh, on the new steelies on the inside. We'll put that uh, that separator disc, and then we'll put our polished aluminums on the outside, and we'll have our uh, we'll have our nice wheels on the Kenworth. Just to mention some names, but well, there's a truck driving legend in the south today. A man called Bandit from Atlanta, GA. Ever give Jam a nose his name? They swear he got ice water running in his veins. Foot like lead and nerves like steel. He's gonna go to glory riding 18 feet. Oh, boy. Well, there we go. Check that out. Just beautifully polished. They can take something like this and, and just make it shiny again. Like always, Stefan does amazing work. It's like looking in a mirror. So now we need to get these over to the tire shop and get some new rubber mounted on there. Check out that date. They're really close there. It's like 0587. <laughs> Classic. Well, dropping them off and one of those stacks is mine these might be it here yeah mirage 323s so a decent grip on there they had a lot uh, they had a lot of extras so i got a pretty good price on uh, on a set of eight so we'll get these mounted we're going to get four steel four white steel wheels and then we'll put the other four on the uh, on the polished reel wheels and then we'll we'll get them put on a snowman all right, time to spend some more money. So the tires are ready, so let's pick them up. This song's very fitting. I do build this stuff one piece at a time. Oh, look at that. Those look familiar. Yeah, so they didn't have any white ones, but they did find in their old stock, they had to ship them in some old steel wheels that are gray, which I think will be not too bad because the gray won't show up as much through the holes. So again, these are guys are gonna go on the inside of the hub and then we'll put the uh, the shiny ones on the outside. And because they were a little older and a little bit of surface rust, he gave me a good deal on them, so. Works for me. Okay, let's get these things on the trailer.
And next we gotta go pick up 40 of these. So we'll stop in at fleet break and hopefully they've got them. Well, that was a score. I totally cleaned them out of these old <laughs> pud lugs. But we got 20 lefts and 20 rights. Cool. Let's go mount some wheels. All right, so we're gonna be able to finally put this drive shaft on because I took this old yoke that was, uh, that was bent out to uh, Pat's drive line on the west end of Edmonton. And they actually had a takeoff. I mean, I painted it up, but it's the exact one. So he gave me a good deal on that. And as you can see, that one was definitely pushed out. So we'll, uh, I just had to swap the, the little dust cover there and we'll put a little uh, anti-seize on the splines. And then I was reading about this. Someone commented that these Milwaukee can actually, you can set the torque. I mean, it's not an exact, I think it's got a plus or minus 10 or 15% tolerance, but it gets you in the ballpark. So I was playing with it. There's an app on my phone for the one key and you Bluetooth connect to the tool. And I believe I've set this up for, for about 450 foot pounds. So, so we'll see how it works. I'm actually curious to see how close it is. So we'll, uh, we'll zip the nut on there and then we'll, uh, we'll use the, my giant new torque crunch and we'll see how close it actually got. And I did buy a new nut. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the video there but these nuts are pretty unique because they've got uh you see the threads kind of bend in there so it's supposed to i think bind on the bind on the threads and then hold it to uh, hold it in place but we're still going to add a little loctite but we'll screw this guy on there now i guess to make sure this is clocked correctly we'll put this guy at exactly 12 o'clock Something like that. And then put this one on. Well, I guess it's not really gonna matter all that much because you can still turn it. But maybe what we'll do is we'll take the back drive shaft and put that at 12 o'clock as well. Oh, that wind's cold. It's just not letting up on winter. Okay. Now one of the One of the comments on there was to set a level on the on the yokes. That way you know exactly where 12 o'clock is. But I think you need to do that for the fine splines. But these, these thicker splines, you can actually just kind of eyeball it. Because it's clear if you go one more over, it's not going to be uh, not going to be level. So that's pretty easy. All right, now it puts a little Loctite on there. Again, that nut, as I was saying, is pretty unique, but I think a little Loctite never hurts. You don't really want these, these guys coming loose. That just makes for a bad day. Okay. There. All right. I'll do the washer and this fancy nut, and then we'll, uh, we'll zip it down with the with our impact that's theoretically set in the neighborhood of 400. And then we'll double check it. Well, that seems to be all she's gonna do. I wasn't sure if the tool was just gonna stop or what, but okay, it should be tight. Now let's get the torque wrenching. Just see how tight it is. Oh, I even got some bobcat work going on here. Get this clay spread and get that shop built.
So to keep this thing from turning, I had to get a little creative. So I just put the, the same tap that I use on my brake chambers on the third member to lock it in for the differential. And what that does is it clicks in and with the brakes applied, this won't turn anymore. So now we can, uh, we can test the torque. So I got this at uh, 400. Okay, so it's, it's got at least 400, so that'll work. I am curious though to see what it went to, so let's let's try 450. Oh. Well, I guess it ain't that accurate. Try 500. I think there's no replacement for a for a torque wrench. That's just the right way to do it. I mean, these tools will get them close, but I think for my lug nuts, I'm just gonna give them a couple ugga duggas and then do this. Yeah, so she's even got 500 on there, probably even north of that. So. Yeah, maybe I'll play with the settings and see if I can figure it out. Maybe I didn't do something right on the tool. So I figured I'd try that trick to see if I got it clocked right. So that's level there. And she's level there. So yeah, drive shaft installed. Okay, so next what I want to do is I want to clean the threads off because there's paint and other rust and junk on there. And I want to make sure we get proper torque and that the uh, the studs don't get hung up or galled or anything like that. So we'll just use a wire wheel and clean them all up. sticker off of here. Oh, that comes off just lovely. Drive oh. or under. There it goes. Silly heavy. There we go. There, finally. Get on there. Okay. Guys who do that for a living are probably laughing at the way I just did that. Now the sun's coming out and it's getting warm. Who's that? These are the new uh, bud lugs we got. Now we're on the passenger side of the truck. So these are right-handed threads, like a normal, like a normal bolt. The other side are left-handed, so we go backwards. Something like that. It'll be a roller by the end of this episode. Okay, so I think I figured this thing out. There's a, there's a setting here, one, two, three, four, and three I think is for, four is full power, three is for like four to 500 foot pounds. And then there's a Bluetooth setting and that's where you click connect it to your phone, but it's not really clear. They've got a range of uh, one to 20. 
So when I did the, the nut there, I just had it set at 10, so it was the middle of the range, and that was supposed to be around 400 foot-pounds, but obviously it was a little more. So this time, instead of using the Bluetooth, we're just going to go and set this at 3 manually, and that should be in the 400 foot-pound range. So we'll, uh, we'll zip one in, well, we'll zip them all in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get the torque wrench out and see what it does. So on level 3, we went till they wouldn't turn anymore. And now we got the uh, torque wrench set to 400, so let's give it a give it a try. I'm gonna steal a steal the socket over here. Come on. There we go. Alright. Oh. Set it nice. So three is the money. Yeah, that one was a little off. There it goes. Pretty darn close. Yeah, I'm loving that tool even more now. All right, here comes the money. <laughs> Look at that. That's gonna be the shiniest thing that's been on this truck since the since the 70s. Okay, let's lift the buggers on. There we go. Something like that. Greasy gloves. Wrecking that nice polish job. There we go. Uh oh. The other must be dead. I think I charged the other one. loud uh, try and save what's left of my hearing oh that's looking good that is looking good New shoes for the old girl. Oh, that is looking so right. So I shouldn't have been so cheap. And when I bought new buds, I should have bought new uh, new lug nuts as well. So I'm not gonna use those old crap ones. I just threw three on there just to, to hold it on. So we'll go get some new, some new lug nuts from Fleet there and we'll paint them black. But that is looking real nice. I'm gonna try and get the other two sets on before it gets dark here. But I'm really happy with how that turned out today. So next we got to get the uh, the fuel tanks polished up. We still got a whole bunch of airlines to run. We'll run new fuel lines and then we're going to get started on the cab. I talked to the to the folks at Day Cab Company and they've already started on the uh, the classic interior to match the movie truck. And yeah, still a long way to go, but man, we're making progress. We're going to get there. 